I give a huge amount of talks in schools, to students, to parents, within companies on the whole issue of cyberbullying and internet safety and how to keep your child safe online. I believe that there's too much technology at too young an age. I think the key in this important area is around parental involvement. We can't stop, you know, what's coming down the tracks, that there's so much technology for our kids. But what we can do is stay involved and we can have an influence on them by talking with them. So I, th I believe in this whole area, the key is around a good relationship with your child. It's not about over controlling. It's not about being overprotective because you can never 100% protect your child in this area. But what you can do is empower them and you empower them by maybe instilling in them your own values and your own beliefs and, uh, and having these open conversations with them where you discuss what's on Facebook, what are the dangers, what are the ways to keep yourself safe, etc, etc. And we take a look maybe at some of the things that you can do maybe with younger and not so younger children just to ensure that your child or teenager is safe online. So show an interest, stay in touch and learn about the new technologies. I think that's key. I think also what's key is really around, you know, sitting with your child up to the age of 10 to ensure, you know, that whatever they're accessing is, uh, is appropriate. I think hold back on smartphones. The reality is that when you hand your child a smartphone, you hand them a computer. And you may not even realize how many things that they can do on that but it opens up a world from which it's very hard for them to walk away from. Everything from Facebook to Snapchat, Instagram, they can watch movies, they can make videos, they can FaceTime their friends, they have group messages. And I'm hearing more and more, you know, from children, and particularly young and mid-teens, that um, it's impacting on their sleep. It's stressing them out trying to keep up with all this stuff, that some of the time they go away maybe to the Geltok or an exchange and they're surprised at what a break it is to get away from it all. In fact, recently my daughter's principal said that when they went on a retreat with the school, what came up on the evaluation forms was that more than anything on the retreat was how wonderful it was to take a break from so much technology. So I think that we need to really speak with, you know, our children around setting limits and I believe that the way to do this is set rules in advance. I think you have to sit down with your child and that it works only if the rules are agreed together and when the rules are agreed together then you follow through. It's like I call it say it, mean it, do it. Remember that your password is like a toothbrush you don't share your toothbrush and you change it on a regular basis and it should be the same with your password. I think we need to say to our children, never ever share your password with anybody, that your friend today may not be your friend tomorrow and it could turn very nasty. So that's one very important tip that comes up time and time again. Also to remind them that when they're online, they need to log out because if they don't log out, somebody else can access perhaps their Facebook account and that should be avoided. Be approachable. It's really important. I myself was the overprotective parent and I can say it doesn't work. When you overprotect or you over control, the only thing that happens is that the behaviour goes underground. My own daughter took great pleasure in telling me recently that she had a Bebo account for years and I never knew. <laughs> so now I realise that the only approach is one around mutual respect, that I listen to the child and we negotiate things with there's a difference around them. I'm going to finish on two really important points. One is to say to your child or teenager, think before you post. Once it's up there, you cannot get it back. And there are so many stories out there, tragic stories, you know, of something that's out there that really uh, you can never get it back because it's been shared and it's gone viral, etc. So think before you post. As uh, somebody said to me recently, Make sure you tell the parents to tell their children that don't put anything out there that if you're not able for what may come back. In other words, that a bully can use what you've put online and they can use it to bully you. Many are unaware of privacy settings. So on Instagram and quite a number of the sites, Snapchat, 
actually the default setting is not actually private, which means that your child needs to know that they need to go into settings and set it to private in order to control who can see anything that they put up online. I think that's a really important point to discuss with our children, particularly when I'm hearing about seven and eight year olds on Snapchat. Every parent has to make their own decision about this, but the general guideline is that parents need to be aware of passwords and pins up to first to second year. The reason for that is that you know, they are children and they may not be able for what is coming down the tracks at them. After that time, a trendy cousin or aunt or an older brother or sister maybe could be the appointed person just to keep an eye on things to ensure that your tweeny or early teenager doesn't get themselves into hot water. So hopefully you'll find that helpful. A few tips around the whole minefield that is keeping your child or teenager safe on the internet. Thank you.